As a quick heads up, you've likely seen by the timecode on the thumbnail that this is a fairly long video. This is going to be a casual conversation about the new B450 platform, so if you're interested in an in-depth look at, say, a specific motherboard like this Gigabyte one here, then you can take a look at the individual reviews or check out plenty of other sources for a little bit more succinct content, but let's get into it. So I think we should start off with what is B450. B450 is a chipset for AMD platforms and AMD motherboards essentially, where if you're looking to use one of the new Ryzen CPUs, Use, whether that's the first gen or the second gen or even the second gen with integrated graphics then you will want to pick up a compatible motherboard and this is the slightly more budget offering. Now in terms of what AMD's motherboard lineup looks like they have their top end X series so in this case the current generation X series chipset is the X470 that is the high end that's the the highest end that they do for their you know, standard Ryzen lineup on the AM4 socket and basically that means that if you want multiple graphics cards and a lot of PCIe support, then that platform is where you head. If you want a bit more kind of a, of a budget approach, but you still want all of the functionality like overclocking the CPU and the memory, then the B450 platform is kind of where they expect you to go. You can also go to the A320 platform, which is technically last generation, has no uh, CPU overclocking support. It does have memory overclocking support though, which is quite nice to see, uh, but is a lot more of a lockdown platform and is generally only reserved for the cheapest of cheap motherboards, uh, but it still does actually handle all of the chips just fine so kind of depends if you really don't want to overclock and you desperately want to save a couple quid then you can go for that platform but generally speaking the b450 platform is where the kind of the vast majority of people who are buying amd ryzen systems should be headed now i've kind of covered who b450 is for already just there but the the overarching consensus is the x470 is really only for ultra high-end builds the only real major difference difference between B450 and X470 is mostly just SLI support. In theory, some of the higher end X470 motherboards can handle much higher overclock, so if you want to really try and push an overclock, or especially if you want to use stuff like liquid nitrogen, then those are the boards that you should head to, but if you're an average consumer, and even if you're overclocking, even your 2700X, most of the B450 boards, generally speaking, can handle that, so that's uh, just something to, to bear in mind. Now, you may know the, the AMD Ryzen chipset fairly well and know that the B series chipsets are where the kind of average consumer should be headed when looking for a motherboard but you're a little bit confused as to why bother with a B450 when a B350 will work just fine has the same socket and as long as it's had a BIOS update it's still perfectly compatible well generally speaking you don't really need to be bothered if you can pick up a B350 board that will suit your needs and will run your chip just fine especially if it's already had a BIOS update then go for it. It's still a perfectly functional board. You know, uh, it obviously depends on what one you get, but generally speaking, it's still perfectly fine and will still run, I believe, all of the chips. There are a few exceptions. Some of the older or kind of cheaper B350 boards did have some pretty cheap VRM solutions, so you might not be able to get a 2700X at full boost clock, for example, but, you know, a 2600 or 2600X should be fine on basically any board. So the main difference that AMD's kind of touting here between the B350 and the B450s are their Store MI technology. This is a uh, piece of software that actually Wendell from Level 1 Text did an excellent video on. I'll try and leave a link in a card or down below for you, but go check out Level 1 Text in general. But um, anyway, the, the point is that Store MI is essentially enterprise software that allows you to do tiering it with your storage. So let's say you have a, an SSD, a 7200 RPM hard drive and a 5400 RPM hard drive. And obviously in terms of speed, you've got your SSD. In fact, even if you had a, an NVMe M.2 SSD, a standard SSD, SSD, fast hard drive, slow hard drive, right? So if you got all of that, you can use StoreMI to effectively create one drive from all of that, but then have your most recently or most frequently accessed files stored on the NVMe drive, and then your least frequently accessed files stored on the slow hard drive, and then kind of split it, split the load in between, so that the things that you need the most, the games that you play the most, will automatically be migrated to faster storage, 
Whereas that picture that doesn't really take long to load up anyway and generally you don't access much gets put on the slower drives. I should also mention they do also have listed support for Precision Boost Overdrive which is effectively a further way to push your chip uh, but XFR still works on all of them. XFR is their extended frequency range which is essentially just their auto overclocking system built into the motherboard and the chip and allows it to go from that sort of like 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz all the way up to 4 to 4.3 gigahertz in some cases with the 2700X so uh, it's all, all kind of nice to see. Now I mentioned that the board that I have here is a Gigabyte B450 board, it's the Aorus Pro and this one has been um, well, a topic of controversy. I'm actually filming this video a couple of days after the launch of uh, that, the board and the B450 chipset, and while I appreciate the video will be going out, you know, a good bit later than that, um, it's still quite fresh in my mind, so I may as well cover it here. Um, the, the Gigabyte VRM situation was a very interesting one. So uh, on the, the box for the, um, the Aorus Pro, they have uh, explicitly listed, in fact, actually it's even bigger on the back, they have explicitly listed that it is an 8 plus 3 hybrid uh, digital PWM paraphrase design. Um, that is something that they have since retracted. Uh, it's actually, well, it's a bit weird. It's technically a 4 plus 3 phase design, but it also has an extra four power phases that don't seem to do that much, but it, they're there. I don't, I don't really understand, but uh, yeah, so that's a thing. Um, that was uh, something that was uh, kind of made public pre-launch. Uh, that said though, uh, one, this, the, like, my review of this board was a launch video and is actually made before any of that, you know, was, was mentioned. So while well, in the video I did say that it is an eight plus three design and that's great. Um, it's, you know, and, and technically that is wrong. Uh, the My comments on its performance were completely unbiased to, you know, whether it's eight or a, a four or a four plus four plus three, you know, whatever else. Um, it still handles the 2700X just fine. It still, you know, went to its full boost clock. You still got the full performance. Even under synthetic 100% Prime 95 load, the VRMs didn't get above, I think, 70 degrees Celsius, and the chip itself didn't throttle at any point. Again, under full 100% load, under gaming load, under, you know, uh, benchmarking load, anything, it was still all perfectly fine. So uh, to, to, to get in a... Uh, <laughs> to get as, as mad as some people got in the comments of that video uh, is really just quite impressive. Now, I appreciate that uh, effectively Gigabyte lying on their boxes, lying in their press material, and then not actually correcting it to me at all um, is, you know, something to be annoyed about. But uh, at the same time, when there is no performance difference uh, and there is no, you know, there's no real world, like, difference in you know if it's a four or an eight phase design does it matter do you have to call me an infomercial channel uh, and you know and call me a liar because you know whatever else so um that that's kind of the the controversy surrounding that um which was a good fun to to be a part of apparently um but yeah it's still a decent board i still recommend it make sure that you you know have a laugh at the sticker that they're going to put on the box to say four uh, or like uh, just they're going to remove the eight plus three bit so it just says hybrid pw PWM paraphrase design, um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> there's that I guess. So overall, what are my thoughts on the B450 platform? Obviously, we've had some fun with the uh, the Gigabyte board itself, but generally speaking, this is exactly where I'd recommend everyone to head. The the board that I have here is actually pretty fantastic. It's a little bit lacking in Rio. There's only a couple of USB ports total and uh, no USB 2, although that's not really a massive issue considering that USB 3 support has been pretty decent but either way it's still quite annoying to, to see you know not that not that many USB 3 ports especially considering how many I used personally but maybe I'm a bit of a weird case let me know in the comments down below um, you also still have you know full four RAM DIMM slots you still do have a lot of PCIe connectivity even though a lot of it is through the chipset so it will be bottlenecked um, you also have two heat synced M.2 slots on this board which is fantastic uh, and yeah, as I said, still handles the 2700X with, you know, full boost clock and everything else and 
handles some pretty decent RAM as well. So yeah, my, my overall recommendation is B450 is great. It has a pretty decent feature set for everyone, including multiple, you know, M.2s, good overall PCIe configurations, decent rear IOs, if not, you know, the best. Uh, still obviously full for random support and uh, every manufacturer seems to be doing an ITX board or at the very least doing a wide range of different sizes from ITX to MATX to full ATX. So uh, really this is becoming a platform where you can buy basically any board for any you know chassis size and you will get a pretty decent experience with some impressive chips. So if you're interested in taking a look at the this board itself, I'll leave a link to the review probably in a card up above, although I might leave in the description down below as well. Um, if you're interested in picking up the board or anything else, then I'll leave a link to the board specifically in the description down there too. And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. This has been a bit more of a informal video, certainly longer as you can tell by the time code. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this a style of video you'd like to see more often? I guess just a bit more of a casual conversation feels a little bit more natural, I guess, uh, and also allows me to give a little bit more information without necessarily worrying too hard about exactly how I say it, exact, you know, delivery, um, you know, whether I, I have a, a laughing fit in the middle or not. And uh, yeah, just kind of a bit more of a, a chill vibe to it. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, the usual kind of end of a YouTube video spiel. Um, if you're new to the channel, there's a subscribe button down there, as you well know. Uh, please do hit the bell and uh, notification icon thing though if you are subscribing because apparently a lot of people aren't getting the notifications at all even with the bell on so there's like no chance that you're going to get any notifications uh, if you don't have that on so please do if you enjoy the videos. There's obviously plenty of other videos over here for you to check out. If you want to support the channel, keep me making these videos on a Monday. I'm kind of dropping Wednesday videos for a little bit, but mostly Wednesdays, uh, Thursday live streams and Friday videos. Uh, then you can check out the links in the description. There's Amazon and Overclock GK affiliates. There's also Humble Bundle down there if you're interested in some games, um, especially the monthly subscription. I think it's like £10 a month or something and gets you a good number of games uh, that are normally a good bit more expensive than that. So you can check that out. There's uh, merch down there too if you want some Tectum GB t-shirts or there's a couple of other designs down there that you might like as well and uh, obviously Patreon if you want to support me directly. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.